Drinking buddies, hunting whiskey in 2024 is crazy. So these are going to be my five tips for things that you should do to help you hunt bourbon in 2024. Let's go. I'm your drinking buddy. All right, drinking buddies, we're going to begin with a bonus tip. This is not one of the top five, but for my first tip, I'm going to say subscribe to this channel because we talk about bourbon almost every day here. We deliver you three long form videos and two shorts every week, and uh, we will tell you how to find those rare bottles on occasion. We will, uh, uh, you know, be sampling all kinds of whiskeys all year long, tell you what's worth hunting for. So subscribe to the channel. That's first. But the real first one that I'm going to hit, that I'm going to uh, suggest to you is no MSRPs, don't overpay. So the best thing you can do, you're in a liquor store, you're in one of those hole in the wall shops, you know, and you think you see something you really want to buy, but it might be priced a little high. Grab it, hold it on in your arm, just in case somebody else walks up and grabs it in front of you and, and Google that MSRP. Google the MSRP because you do not want to overpay for things. Now, I get it. I have overpaid for a few things. There's some things I know I will, am willing to overpay for. I am willing to overpay for Stag Jr. Um, this is a $60 bottle retail, and it is better than these that are $150 retail. How can I not be willing to pay $150 for this when I'm willing to pay $150 for this? Don't tell Buffalo Trace I said this. They can't see this video. Don't raise the price of Stag to $150, please. Anyway... I like these better than these, so I gotta be willing to pay extra for these. So I've only had to do it once though. I've paid MSRP for every bottle of stag I own, except for one. <laughs> Tip number two. You're gonna wanna avoid those museum liquor stores. I get it, it's tempting to go in those stores where they have 50 bottles of Pappy and they're all $70,000, but hey, there's a reason those bottles are sitting there collecting dust. It's because that store owner is a jerk and he's overcharging. Now, there is some middle ground here. I definitely have been to some great stores that charge more than MSRP, but are, you know, are borderline charging too much, but they still fit in that category of a shop that I'm willing to shop at. Um, I can definitely think of one in Phoenix. I won't mention it by name here just in case I'm, you know, seen as trashing on them because I don't feel like I am. Anyway, they charge about um, 60% more than, you know, a little bit more than double MSRP for rare bottles. Now that might sound like a lot, but, but you say, I like that bottle you have up there for $300. I'm already buying three bottles that they have charged MSRP. I would like to bundle those together. And I would like you to charge me less for that. Those are things that can happen at those hole in the wall stores where the owner is the guy selling you the stuff. So keep those in mind. Avoid the museum liquor stores, support businesses who are not charging too much. Try to find great places like, like I have in Tucson here, I have Nana's Kitchen. It's a Mexican food restaurant. Who would think that's a great place to go buy bottles? But it is. He charges very, very fair prices and they have great store picks and he can get a lot of things that other people can't get or they're just not willing to. Some stores don't have things on shelves because they're just not ordering them. If you ask Marco at Nana's Kitchen for something, he can probably get it. Next up, this is my new rule for 2024. And it may sound crazy, but it's my new rule and I'm gonna hold firm to it. Under 100 proof, over $100, I'm out. I'm not spending $100 on a bottle under 100 proof ever again. I'm not doing it. That means Michter's 10, sorry, I'm out. Midwinter Night's Tram, sorry, I'm out. If you think you're a bourbon, rye, single malt, whatever it is, under 100 proof should cost more than $100, you're wrong. There's a couple exceptions to this. I will freely admit that BTAC is an exception to this. So if I saw a bottle of SAS 18 at MSRP, I'm buying it. But that's probably about the only one I can think of. I'm not paying that high, I mean, okay, the Pappy. The Pappy line, some of the Pappy lines are under, uh, um, you know, under 100 proof and they're over $100. I would probably buy those. But other than those very specific examples, I'm just not doing it. Next up, make legit relationships. And I don't mean make relationships with people and you're only using them for their whiskey. I mean, make legit relationships with people. I mean, not just people at the stores. I mean, like friends in the community. I would say go to your local stores, talk to the people in the whiskey aisles, 
they'll if you become friends with people and i mean legit friends i don't mean like people you're using for whiskey i mean become legit friends with people they'll tell you when stuff's landing they'll tell you when you need to be places they'll tell you where to be and those are the types of relationships that you can't buy you you can only make those by going out there and talking to people so if you're an introvert you might have to break out of your comfort zone a little bit for that one next up number five and this is this is i think my favorite list um favorite of the list because this is something that i think that everyone needs to be doing that a few people are overlooking but that is hunt more store picks like man some of the best bottles i get every year are store picks and they can vary by batch to batch i get it you know some places like total wine for example they're a big huge conglomerate sometimes you get a store pick that tastes so good you want to go back and buy three or four more and then sometimes you get a, a store pick that's a little weaker but the more store picks you try, the more unique flavors you're going to come up with. Most bourbon on these shelves behind me are, are blended together to give you a unique, uh, the same experience every time you buy it. Every time you buy a bottle of Rare Breed or, you know, Michter's Barrel Strength or, you know, Bardstown Origin Series or Weller 107 or, um, let's see, or Eagle Rare, they're blended. Well, Eagle Rare is actually an almost store pick. Cancel Eagle Rare. Anyway, most whiskey is blended to taste the same every time you go to buy a bottle. So you don't go to the bottle to the store and you get a bottle you love and then you go to buy another one and you hate it. Uh, the term small batch still allows you to be in that category. Single barrel store picks are a different animal because you might get completely different, unique notes you've never tasted on a whiskey before on a store pick. And that's why I think that this is my favorite of the late uh, And this is why I think this is my favorite tip of the year. Buy more store picks. Anyway, drinking buddies, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. Every time you guys like the videos, every time you guys subscribe to the channel, you make this thing possible. Cheers. I'm your